Hello, this is Timothy Nakia. Welcome to my channel. Um, good morning. It's morning time where I'm at. Um, yeah, I wanted to do a quick video on something I am working on or have to work on more. Um, I just watched a, a video um, I got inspired to read um, a Tony Gaston's video and I got inspired to read Ephesians, um, the book of Ephesians and um, also James 3. Um, and in that video, he was talking about the pastor's wife who... Um, Um, who's no longer here um, and they were saying he was under and I don't know they are assuming he is um, under investigation or whatever but in that video he, it, he talked about reading the chapter or reading the Bible in the morning um, when he got up he read the Bible and he talked about um, um, you know speech on working on what you say um, and that was just a short, short snippet, but that encouraged me to read in Ephesians, um, as someone was saying, also read James 3, um, in the comments about controlling your tongue and working on what you say. And so, um, I read Ephesians, the whole book of Ephesians this morning, and I read James chapter 3. And, um... Yeah. So I'm going to read um, Ephesians 5 and James 3 real quick. Bear with me. While I find, while I find Ephesians, it's in the ends, in the end section. <laughs> Still in a bit. <laughs> this is a lazy Saturday. All right. Ephesians 5. Now let me find the verse. What verse is? I think it's 5. Oh, maybe it's Ephesians 4. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, it's Ephesians 4. Um, I'm going to start with... start at verse um, 17 it says um, with the Lord's authority I say this live no longer as the Gentiles do for they are hopelessly confused their minds are full of darkness they wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds um, oh I'm reading from oh I'm reading from the New Living Translation. All right, so uh, what did I leave off at? I'll start with 18. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against them. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. 
put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while, while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work, and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you'll be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And then James, um, James 3 states, um, I'll start with, um, verse 7, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. If you are wise and understanding God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So, as I was um, thinking about these scriptures and thinking about um, um, thinking of where I am in relation to um, speech and these scriptures, um, I noticed some things that I myself need to work on. So a little something about me. Um, I learned, um, um, I guess it would be like a spiritual gifts class. So my former pastor did a spiritual gifts class where he taught us about spiritual gifts and um, um, and we did like an assessment to see what our spiritual um, gifts were. And one of my spiritual gifts is encur the encourager or encourager. Um, and so... I am a person who, by the grace of God and for his glory, gives, um, I encourage others. Um, and not just through speech, but also in action. Um, and I think in the way I live. Um, but as an encourager, you notice you use your voice. You use your speech, right? You are encouraging others, lifting up others, motivating others, empowering others. I do that with the work that I do. Um, I do that um, when I taught Sunday school. I, I do that in my writing. I'm an encourager. Um, 
But if I don't steward that gift with God's wisdom and with humility um, and with his truth, um, well, with any gift, it can, you know, go a little haywire. So you have to be, um, you have to be careful and wise how you're operating your your spiritual gifts. Um, And these spiritual gifts are, I think, are part of your personality. It's something that God puts inside of you is a characteristic that is of God as well. You know, this spiritual gift is a characteristic of God. He's an encourager, right? But when we operate in our, or we operate our spiritual gifts without his wisdom or with, you know, without his grace and wisdom and his word, you know, you could go left. You can, um, go a little haywire, um, so how that looks sometimes um, you can over encourage or sugarcoat and so you have to be careful with um, how you steward in your spiritual gifts and I hope I'm communicating it right or saying it right um, so some of the things I have noticed over in my life that I have to be careful um, speech wise is um, over you know sugarcoating or over encouraging sometimes people just want you to listen um, sometimes people don't want you to solve their problems um, I'm the oldest girl I mean oldest child I am um, a lady <laughs> I'm an encourager and sometimes you know an a nurturer and I have to remember, not everybody wants you to always give them a solution. And some, and here's the thing, you don't have to always give solutions. Let them lead them or coach them in finding their own solution. On trusting God for themselves. Um, and just sometimes let them vent and, and, and listen. You know, listen to them. Um, oversharing sometimes um, so I'm an in, I am an introvert um, I can't keep to myself a lot um, but I, I do have the part where I can when I do open up I can overshare sometimes and so sometimes that grieves me <laughs> like why did I say that you know um, so oversharing um, sharing things prematurely like a goal or um, uh, um, a plan you know use God's wisdom when to share and and when to reveal stuff um, so oversharing sugarcoating um, so these are some things that I thought about when reading these scriptures and wanting to come on and give a quick video about um, just learning to shut your mouth, <laughs> quiet down, you know, and some of the things that we tend to do that gets us in trouble or um, set a fire in a forest. When we open up our mouth, oversharing, sugarcoating, overpromising for those who are people pleasers. And we had to work on that. Um, and still working on that. Um, cussing and working on that. And the killing part is when I was coming up, I wasn't much of a cusser. Um, I always joke and say, started my siblings got older and I started working with teens and just woo. <laughs> But no, um, I do desire to um, not say any cuss words. One, because I am a believer of Christ Jesus. Two, because I am a lady. And I um, want to, um, I don't want to be a cusser. And so I'm, I'm praying and working on that one. 
Um, so oversharing, sugarcoating, overpromising, cussing or cursing, responding in your emotions, um, boasting, false humility, speech, um, and you, um, that false humility, um, humble bragging, whatever. Insecure speech, not being able to receive a compliment and, and instead you put yourself down or something like that. Um, lewd, jo- lewd jokes, um, um, and gossip. And so these are some things I thought about that many of us have issues with. A lot of my issues with oversharing, sugarcoating, sometimes overpromising, cussing, um, maybe responding to my emotions a little bit, not all the time, but a little bit. Um, uh, I've done much better with the, the gossip, like shutting it down. Not even so. The thing with gossip is not participating in it um, by gossiping, but also working on shutting it down when someone brings it to you. Um, um, and then also consuming a lot of celebrity gossip. That's something I had to work on. So, so these are some things that um, we all can work on, especially believers in Christ Jesus. Working on it, and and here's what I always tell people: you cannot do these things in your own strength. You need God for everything, His grace for everything, His power for everything. You cannot do this alone. Continue to saturate in his word. Continue to give yourself grace and mercy. And continue to persevere. If you fall back, get back up and say, Lord, let's let's go ahead at it again. But you need God to overcome anything. Um so um some ways we could tame our tongue, shut it up, be quiet are and these are some things that and nothing is in order um, but these are some things that came to mind um and that some of these things i've been working on and need and the others i need to work on more um is one shutting down gossip um if someone brings you gossip i don't know if this is always true but i do believe that if the person who gossips with you Maybe a person that gossips, gossips about you. Um, and then it's just releasing things from our mouths about someone could really bring so much heartache and pain. And so you don't want to be one to, um, you just don't want to cause people any more heartache and pain um that's one thing to tell the truth about something or someone um but you should be able to approach that person pull them to the side and talk to them separately um so let us avoid from spreading gossip and listening to gossip and then the Sometimes gossip may be true. Sometimes gossip might be lies, lies and exaggerations and so forth. And so you don't want to be one spreading lies about someone. You don't want to put something out there and then you have to retract and like, oh, I thought that, you know, or I thought this person was one way and they're not. Um, Let's not be reckless with our mouths. Gossip, gossiping can cause recklessness with our mouths. Um. Another thing is, and like I said, nothing is in order. Um, spending time alone, um, learning to find your voice and clearing your head. And that's all together. Like spending time alone allows you to clear your head, allows you to reflect, um, allow, allows you to um, listen to your own voice. Um, sometimes you have to clear your head, get out everybody else's voice, um, put God's voice up front. Um, learn about yourself, reflect, um, 
you know, and I believe this helps with, you know, um, learning who you are so that you could avoid that insecure speech, um, false humility speech, um, And, and you know, other things that we have problems with speech. It, it's just very crucial to self-reflect and spend time alone and clear your head. Um, get some alone time. Get recentered, refocused. Um, another thing is reading more um, and building your vocabulary. So I was joking with my sister, but kind of not joking. Um, one day I was saying, man, I feel like I'm getting dumber. Um, I don't know if it's social media. I don't know if it's getting older. But, um, and then I don't read like I used to. I used to love reading books. Um, but I think reading more and building your vocabulary will help um, with the cussing, like cussing less. Um, you know, able to communicate. Um, you're able to communicate much better. Um, um, <laughs> so I that's what I, I think um, and then also not responding in your emotions helps with the you know with cussing less because <laughs> sometimes we cuss because we're responding in our emotions um, and I say sometimes um, so reading more building your vocabulary um oh i forgot this and i didn't write this down but being quick to listen and slow to speak um i did write down slow down and breathe but that being quick to listen and um be quick to listen and slow to speak is a scripture i forgot the actual scripture address but it is a scripture and it is so wise and it is so crucial being quick to listen you have two ears for a reason be quick to listen. Sometimes we listen to respond instead of listening to understand and to get all the details. <laughs> listen. Be quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow down. Slow down when you're talking. Slow down. Listen. Um... So that's another one being quick to listen and slow to speak so shut down the gossip spend time alone read more build your vocabulary clear your head um, slow down breathe take a deep breath before you respond slow down when you're talking sometimes even in let's say you're in an interview sometimes your nerves are rattled you get to speaking fast slow down they always tell you to slow down breathe do that in every conversation and everything that you are um everything regarding speech um you know even in an emergency you want to slow down to a certain extent to you don't want to operate in panic and i know sometimes we act a certain way sometimes you're going to panic sometimes you're going to be moving fast but if you can slow down a bit too or get a hold of yourself a bit to um put it pull it together you'll be able to better respond um um and i've had that happen um so my nephew when he was younger um he was riding on a bike with one of my siblings and his foot got caught in this little small piece i'm like how did it do that and um i'm they came to get me and I'm running outside like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm panicking and I could feel or hear. It wasn't audible, but I could feel the Holy Spirit saying, um, calm down. And when I was able to calm down, um, cause he was panicking too. He was able to, he, I noticed he calmed down a bit. And so, um, that moment was a teachable moment for me. Okay, you calm down. He calmed down. And then shortly after, a guy come running up the street. We were on the corner of our block. Come running, riding up the, driving up the street. 
and on the back of his truck he had a tool that could loosen that and were able to get his foot out of that small piece so you know slow down calm down okay all right um another thing is um i guess um get a hold of your emotions um, feel them, express them, but do not let them control you. Um, so that's very crucial. Understanding your emotions, feeling them, but not letting them control you. Um, getting a hold of them. And then another thing is um, use wisdom when you're speaking. Um, use wisdom. And read God's word. God's word is full of his wisdom. Um, slow down enough to listen to him and to um, hear what the person is saying or what's going on in the situation. You know, and apply God's word. You know, you can apply experience. You know, a lot of us have built wisdom through our experiences, but um utilize that but also nothing um trumps god's word um um his word and wisdom is synonymous to anything and so um utilize wisdom another is be kind to others and not just others but yourself as well um would you um well some people will i, I was gonna say would you call yourself friend a fat f you know um some people would <laughs> not talking to y'all but for those <laughs> who would not why would you call yourself that you know be kind to yourself and be kind to others remember we all are going through something and um the world needs people to be kind to one another we need to be kind to one another but we need to be mindful of another one another um, so be kind to others. Um, I didn't say be a pushover or people pleaser, but I, or be, um, oh, she too nice, da, 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 da. But be kind to one another. Love others as you love yourself. And be kind to yourself. Receive that compliment. Don't follow it up with a backhand compliment to yourself or, um, um, you know, disregarding the compliment, to receive the compliment, smile, say thank you, and let it be. <laughs> receive it. Um, remember, if you love people, you will tell them the truth. I heard that from somebody or from somewhere, that if you love someone, you'll tell them the truth. And if you're sugarcoating and telling lies and you just lie about everything or lying to people that you so-called love it's just a disgrace i mm, i can't stand especially when i give someone the chance to tell me the truth and they still lie to me in my face it is so hurtful and so disrespectful let's um tell the truth let's um be wise let's be kind but let's tell the truth, okay? Um, the next one, pray about what to say and share. Spend time in not always being quick to respond. Pray about what to share. Pray about what to say. Don't always try to hurry up and give a response and you didn't use wisdom. You didn't listen carefully. Um, yeah, pray about what to say, what to share. Slow down and give something an, an appropriate response give a wise response give a carefully thought out response um and okay so i did say think before you speak be quick to listen slow to speak um think before you speak and then also try not to overthink or worry too much about what people think um, you want to be authentic um, and just worrying and overthinking about what to say and <laughs> it makes you fumble more. I know that firsthand. 
So try not to overthink or worry about what people think. Yes, you take in consideration what people think. But if you're a person who people pleases, who um, over promises, who sugarcoats, you're worrying about what people think so much that it can cripple you and it can make you fumble and it can make you inauthentic. So don't worry too much about what people think. Don't try to overthink. Um, pray about what you should say. Listen carefully. Um, think before you speak and release with truth, integrity, and authenticity. Um, but do not worry about what people say. I mean, what people think and listen more. Um, so those are some things that we need to do in order to shut our mouths, quiet down, tame the tongue, um, get a hold of our tongue because, whew, um, yeah, yeah, we got to work on, yeah, we had to work on these tongues. All right. I'm Tanika Nikia. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And you have a great weekend. Bye.